a brutal murder of a young beauty. The girl's ghost will reveal the whole truth about her death. Don't miss out. Psychics will look into the eyes of the real beast. This is Psychic Investigations, a channel of true and astonishing stories. Here, people who call themselves clairvoyants investigate incredible mystical anomalies and resonant criminal cases. Psychics Kayal Alekperov and Jana Shulakova met to discuss an important matter. But before the clairvoyants could even get out of the car, a woman approached them. Hello. Hello. I need your help. My daughter went missing on November 4th, 2015. She was murdered. In this photo, 15-year-old Kristina Storozhenko is with her younger sister at the celebration of the 1st of September at school. Her dream was to become a medic and work with children. A beauty and one of the best students in her class. She was going to enter the local medical school the next summer. Christina and I were going to enter it together. Back then, no one could have imagined that Christina's cherished dream would never come true. The murder of the 15-year-old beauty became one of the most brutal crimes in this area in the recent 10 years. So let's find somewhere to sit and talk. Strange. But my book tells me that your daughter was buried twice. Yes. The murderer buried Christina's body in a grove 20 kilometers from the village where she lived. The pit was very deep. Christina's mother shudders at the thought that she might not have even found her daughter's body at all. According to the police, she was found by geologists from a local oil company during a technical inspection. The mother still doesn't understand how her daughter ended up so far away from home. After all, Christina was last seen at the cafe in the village center. She must have been transported, either alive or dead, to the place where her body was found. It was a real grave. The pit was large, and it was as long as my daughter was tall. According to forensic materials, the cause of the death was mechanical asphyxia as a result of strangulation. A fairly wide groove remained on the victim's neck. The investigators consider she was strangled with a leather belt. Marina raised Christina alone. She divorced her father over 10 years ago. On the evening of her daughter's disappearance, the mother was at work, but she remembers the last phone conversation with her in detail. I called her around four. Christina asked her mother for permission to go to the local cafe, where she planned to meet friends and have coffee. She promised to be home by 8 p.m. She said, Mommy, I love you so much. And that was it. Christina Storozhenko was last seen alive on the evening of November 5th, 2015, here at the cafe called Dibrova. A cafe employee confirmed it. She was sitting here. The kids, they always get their coffee and sit here. Christina didn't return home by the promised time. Her mother called her again, but she didn't pick up the phone. Christina always came home on time and always answered her mother's calls, so the woman got alarmed immediately. I phoned all her friends and acquaintances and searched for Christina everywhere. According to the cafe employee, the group of young people Christina was with left around 8 in the evening. Christina said she was going home. No one knows where she went. Only one local resident saw a girl resembling Christina get into a dark car. However, he couldn't make out the car's plate number or the driver in the dark. He said Christina got into either a foreign car or a Tavria. Marina's heart sank. Her daughter would never voluntarily get into a car with a stranger, so the mother immediately contacted the police. They told me 
right away that either they would find the body or she would come back on her own. I have goosebumps all over. The following day, the entire village was searching for Christina, but the search was fruitless. Everyone was shocked. Nobody could believe it. I thought she was alive. Christina's mother called all the local hospitals and morgues, but to no avail. Every day I went to the police, and every day I begged them, but no one seemed to be looking or doing anything. For nine days, we searched for her ourselves. When I finally called the general prosecutor's office in Kiev on the 12th and complained, they called me on the 13th and said they had found her. I was devastated. According to the forensic materials, Christina died between two and three in the morning. On the same day, she disappeared. But where she was for about six hours after she left the cafe remains a mystery. Can I see a photo of your daughter? Yes, yeah, sure. How horrible. Your daughter's entire body is bruised. Her skull was fractured. Her ribs were broken. There was a huge bruise near her temple. I don't know who did this to her, but it's very hard without her. She was good and sweet, and she had the entire life ahead. I want the psychics to help us. You have an item that belonged to someone who died. Do you wear your daughter's ring? Yes. This ring, it was your gift to your daughter for some celebration. Wait, was it her last birthday? Yes. They gave it back to me right away. I put it on a chain and never take it off as a reminder of Christina. I'd like to work with the ring. I see a young man in handcuffs. Marina, is there a suspect in this murder? Well, yes. One boy was suspected right away on the 13th. I studied the case materials thoroughly and found a confession from a young man named Stepan Prokopenko. He claimed he was the one who murdered Christina. Was he detained? Two years ago. But if the suspect is already in detention, why did you come to us? They only told me he was the killer. And I immediately said that he didn't kill her. When Prokopenko was asked in court how he did it, he couldn't explain or even describe the basic things, like what Christina wore. Our expert decided to contact the investigator in this case to find out why and for what Stepan Prokopenko was detained. The case is in court. No one has the right to comment during the court session. Christina was a tall girl. She was 180 meters tall, and he's a head shorter than her. Besides, she was quite strong physically. So she was supposed to resist, right? Compared to her, He's really weak. He wouldn't have managed it alone. I don't believe it was him. It turned out that Stepan comes from a large family. When he was arrested, his relatives didn't even have money to hire a lawyer. The locals speculate that the police might have made a mistake, as he was the only cafe visitor that evening who had a prior theft conviction. Well, stealing and killing are two different things. Wait. The witness who saw your daughter mentioned a dark car. But when I tune in to Stepan's energy, I see him driving a white car. This suspect, who is in custody, had none of Christina's hair or fibers on his clothes or in his car, nothing at all. But how could the suspect strangle the victim? bury her body, and not leave any fibers from his clothes on hers. There is no evidence against him, no fingerprints, nothing. The suspect has been in pretrial detention for two years, and the trial is still ongoing. Perhaps the prosecution still lacks the necessary evidence of his guilt. 
My book is now telling me that the girl wants us to find a man with a key. A man with a key to a room. It's a torture chamber. Are you sure she wasn't held somewhere after she disappeared? I just want to know the truth. What really happened and who did this? I can't live with this. We'll try to do everything possible. Let's meet tomorrow morning. All right. May I keep this ring to work with it? Yes, of course. So, we'll be back tomorrow to start the investigation. Thank you. The next morning, on their way to meet with Marina, the psychics exchange their visions. Kayal, I had such a terrible dream last night. There was utter darkness, and I only heard a woman's piercing scream. Help me! I headed towards the scream and suddenly a gray-haired woman appeared in front of me out of the darkness. She stood with her back to me, and I couldn't see her face. Strange. Who could the gray-haired woman be, and what does she have to do with Christina's murder? In the morning when I summoned my djinns, they told me a strange phrase. A silver deer will point the way to falsehood. You know, after I worked with the ring last night, I had a strange dream. Someone tore a chain with an icon from a girl's neck. And then fire flared up around her. It looks like some kind of ritual murder. Jana, look, what is this? It can't be, a field is burning outside the window. It's a sign. Both psychics had very strange visions. What is that all supposed to mean? Hello. Hello. Marina, take this. I had a lot of strange visions. One of them was about a man taking a shoe off your daughter's body. Was your daughter found barefooted? Yes, she was. Christina was indeed found missing one shoe. The police searched the area, but never found the missing shoe. I understood that the man from my vision didn't take the shoe for no reason. It looks like a maniac who took a trophy. To understand their visions better, the psychics decided to go to the cemetery where Christina is buried. Hush, hush. I just... Drink it. Breathe. Inhale deeply and drink the water. It's all right. I just... I've never felt this bad. Marina, be brave. I see a girl. She's scared. Huge, wide open eyes. And something like a black cloth on her face. It's a mark, like a hand covering her mouth. She had a handprint on her mouth, like someone had covered her mouth. There was a bruise. She won't talk. She's still afraid of her murderer. My book says that the murderer is someone she knew very well. Their relationship was quite warm. Hold on. Are you talking about warm feelings? The boy, the man who was accused of this? He didn't know her. They never communicated. And they had no warm relationship. No, they didn't communicate with each other. You said the girl knew her murderer. You know, I hear a phrase repeating, Love, kill, love, hate. Does this mean the feeling of love turned into hatred? Love, kill, wait, wait. It was written somewhere because I clearly see the lines. Who was she corresponding with? She had a boyfriend, Dimitro Makarenko. 
They corresponded on social media. Dimitro studied programming at the Polytechnic Institute. He saw Christina when he came home on weekends. The couple mostly communicated by phone or on social media. But could he really be involved in the murder of his girlfriend? Christina's mother gave our expert the password to her daughter's social media account. And here's what we found out. Here's Dimitro Makarenko. He writes, I love you. And here, look, I'll kill you. He threatened her. Could the boy who was in love with Christina have done this to her? Oh my God. He is a suicide. He hung himself. Jana, my jinns say that the boy was driven into the slipknot by a strong sense of guilt. At first, after Christina was buried, he would arrive in the evenings, when it was already dark, at 8 or 9, and go to the cemetery. This is horrific. Could the boy have killed Christina and then committed suicide? Before her death, Christina had a conflict with this Dimitro. They had a fight. Everyone is shocked. Could Dimitro have killed Christina because she wanted to break up with him? Wait, Marina. Do you smell gasoline? I do. The smell of gasoline. It's very strong. The girl's spirit is giving us a sign now. Before her death, Christina smelled gasoline. She was being transported in a car. Marina, tell me, did Dimitro have a car? No, he didn't. So Dimitro had nothing to do with Christina's murder. He blamed himself for her death because he wasn't with her on the day she died. Katerina Malichenko decided to check Dimitro's alibi, and it turned out that on the evening of Christina's murder, he was at the institute, out of the village. Despite the quarrel with Christina, he still dreamed of being with her. Yes, he spent days and nights at the cemetery. He... loved her very much. But if Dimitro wasn't guilty of the brutal murder of Christina Storozhenko, then who took her life? Marina, I feel that you suspect someone from your family in your daughter's murder. It's Christina's father. Am I right? Strangely, Marina doesn't answer the psychic's question. Marina, why are you silent? Where was your ex-husband when Christina disappeared? Did he participate in the search for your daughter? I asked him, let's go there, let's search for her. But he said he didn't have time for that. The father refused to search for his own child? But why? Does he know we've taken on the investigation of your daughter's murder? He's very much against it. Against you and against all of this that we started. Kyle, I suggest we go to see the father. I'll show you where he lives. This is the house. It's locked. I feel that your husband is inside. Suddenly, we heard someone close the door of the house, and then a silhouette flickered in the window. There's someone inside. Dimitro, come out to talk to us, please. Dimitro, we need to know the truth. I am not going to ask the devil what on God's mind is. Strangely, the man flatly refused to talk to us, claiming we were connected with the devil. Marina, is this his car? Yes. Wait. I now see your husband dragging your daughter's body into the car. 
This is insane. Is this really the same dark car that, according to the witness, a girl resembling Christina got into? A man. And next to him, I clearly see the girl. It can't be. Is the father really involved in the murder of his own daughter? Watch the next episode. The psychics will uncover the mystery of the brutal murder. A room that I would call a torture chamber. Your daughter is screaming, struggling, but she can't do anything. Marina, your daughter was raped. It was very brutal. I want to look into this person's eyes. Don't miss out. Meanwhile, if you're impressed by the story, don't forget to give this video a like and subscribe to our channel. Many more shocking investigations are coming up.